All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you for coming out. My name is Dave Warner. I am a senior experience designer at Adobe on the Adobe Character Animator team. I've been with Adobe for about seven years now. Um, started on a product called Premiere Clip, and then about four years ago joined the, uh, the Character Animator team. So when you think about uh, animation in general, it is honestly behind some of the most influential and innovative storytelling of our, uh, the past century. The reason we know the name Disney nowadays is because of, originally, a black and white mouse. So before it came a multi-billion dollar corporation, owns everything in the world, uh, it started with, uh, with you know, this, little, this little guy and eventually moved on into more fantastical feature length uh, things, like a fairy tale. Now this could have been done with live action and they could have you know, hired some actors and stuff, but it was just made that much more amazing because they did it with animation. Um, animation has given us some of the most iconic characters of all time. People like Bugs Bunny, uh, the Flintstones, and it took a boy and his dog from the comics page and brought them to life um, as animated characters. This is my childhood growing up. Uh, I was born in 1980, and uh, when I was watching TV after school, this is the type of shows I would watch. So uh, that's He-Man, Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show with Zelda on Fridays. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Ren and Stimpy, uh, The Simpsons, the real Ghostbusters, not the fake one that had the gorilla. Do you remember that one? That was bad. Not that one. No, the real Ghostbusters. Uh, DuckTales, woohoo! Sorry, I had to do it. And Ch -ch -ch Chippendales, Rescue Rangers. So this was my childhood growing up. When I think back to the stories and characters and worlds that influenced me, this was it. Um, and it was great because you know these are things again that y you can't really do with live action. Some of this stuff could have been done, and yes, the Ghostbusters did have a live action movie, and they're remaking all of these as live action movies now. But back in the day, uh, it was uh, it was great to see these fantastical worlds and characters brought to life. And then with the advent of CGI, animation started to bring 3D characters to life. So it brought three, you know, dinosaurs back from extinction and brought toys like Buzz and Woody um, to life as well. I've got two kids, a six and an eight year old, and uh, when I see what they're watching today, mainly on Netflix and eventually Disney Plus, already signed up for that, and uh, Hulu and other things like that, uh, so much of the content is animated. Um, and so I see like what I went through in the 80s, they're going through now. They love My Little Pony, Ninjago, Carmen Sandiego, a bunch of these different ones. And uh, it's great to just see all this, uh, you know, all this animated content. It feels like it's never been a better time uh, to be involved with animation and animated stories. And that's not to say that animation is just for kids, though. Uh, there's plenty of you know, more adult, mature-themed uh, animation as well, with shows like Rick and Morty, Family Guy, and BoJack Horseman. Again, it's never been a better time to uh, do this sort of stuff. And then there's a lot of animators, up-and-coming animators, or people who are saying, you know, I don't have to just do the 22-minute pilot episode and submit it to Cartoon Network to have people hear, you know, see my cartoons. They're just self-publishing. They're clicking publish on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or Twitch and getting their animation out there into the world. And so this next generation of creative animators are uh, just kind of bypassing that system. And they have just as many followers and a huge, you know, uh, community following them as they would if they had done a uh, broadcast show. So animation seems like it's a great storytelling device. Okay, but why don't more people animate then? Uh, why isn't everyone animating? Well, number one, animation takes a really long time uh, to create the assets, to create the characters and the props and the background and the foreground and all of that stuff. It's pretty time intensive. And then you have to animate all the motions, all the head movements, the arms, the walking. All that stuff can be really hard and take a really long time. Not to mention stuff like lining up the lip sync alone. In 2D animation, the mouth changes when you know, you're talking and that can be really difficult um, to get everything looking professional and looking correct. Um, it also requires knowledge of pretty complicated tools. After Effects is used for a lot of uh, professional animation, but uh, it can be pretty intimidating to newcomers. So, you know, a lot of you might, you know, you open up After Effects, if you haven't before, you open it up, you see all those icons and things, you're like, nope, I'm out of here. And, you know, it looks like a 747 cockpit, right? It's kind of a little, little scary. Um, so it's a very powerful tool, but it can be pretty intimidating. So the barrier to entry to enter into these tools um, can be pretty high. And then the last thing is that it's difficult to look good. So even if you learn how to use these tools, and even if you do have the time, uh, your animation starting out can look pretty clunky and robotic and uh, not that great, right? And smooth, natural animation uh, is pretty difficult to do. 
So all these things are kind of stacked up against you. And this is how I felt about animation, particularly character animation, um, for a really long time. I've always loved to draw, always loved illustration, um, and it's always been a passion of mine, but animation, character animation, never felt like something that I could do. It always felt like, oh, I need a team of animators working on that or something, you know. It, it just it didn't feel realistic. So when I was taking on a new video project or, um, you know, something like that, and animation was a possibility, it just never really occurred to me that that was, uh, that was possible. I had characters in my head. I had stories in my head. I made funny voices every once in a while, but uh, it just never translated into something uh, animated. This is the whiteboard outside my office. Um, some people say it's a cry for help. I don't know. Um, so all that changed, though, when I learned about Adobe Character Animator. By show of hands, who has used Character Animator before? OK, there's like 20 people out of 100 something. OK, marketing department needs to do a better job on that. Um, so uh, Character Animator is a uh, tool that's in the Creative Cloud uh, that allow all apps plan, which allows you to take any PSD or AI file, any Photoshop or Illustrator file, and if you name the layers a certain way, left eyebrow, right pupil, uh, mouth shape, that will translate into an animated character that you can animate using your own face and voice, using performance capture. So it uh, just makes animation feel a little bit more accessible. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's go in here, and I've got this cat character, uh, this blue cat that I created. And this is just a Photoshop character, right? It's uh, just something that I did. Yep, I got a session. Thank you for that uh, note. Um, good calendar invite. Uh, so I've got these different, you know, all my layers from Photoshop are showing up over here. And for example, if I select the head, I see that this head over here has been tagged as blue. That's a term the character animator understands. It said, okay, because this is a head, I know I'm going to tag that as a head, and that's information I can use later to animate. Same thing with the, uh, you know, the left eye or the right eyebrow or that sort of stuff. It all gets tagged over here. If you want to see a full list of text tags, you just click this little A icon, and it will show you all the possible things you can name your layers in Photoshop or Illustrator to have them tagged. However, if you're incredibly unorganized like me in Photoshop or Illustrator, and this was not called right eyebrow, but instead it was called layer 572 final final for real this time, uh, <laughs> you've been there as well, okay, good, uh, then you could still just bring it in and just click on the little character over here and it would get tagged as an eyebrow. Okay. So then you bring a character, great, you've got it, it looks great, you, you tagged and named everything right, you bring it into record mode, and then when you turn on your webcam, uh, what does that allow you to do? Well, it allows you now to do face tracking. So as I move my eyebrows, as I blink, there we go, as I look around with my pupils, um, and as I move my head, there's even a little physics to the hair. There's a whole physics engine within Character Animator as well. And even better, when I turn on the microphone, now I'm doing live lip sync as well. So this is just in the Photoshop or Illustrator file, I have a group called Mouth. And in that Mouth group, I have uh, 14, up to 14 different layers that I can put in there. My ah mouth, my ooh mouth, my e mouth, all of that stuff. And Character Animator is going to automatically, using Adobe Sensei technology, which you're getting sick of, now it's a drinking game by, at this point. Um, <laughs> you, uh, uh, you, it listens to what you say and then analyzes it and basically serves up in real time um, whatever you know, mouth shape it's looking for. So um, in a auditorium with you know coming out of this, it's not the best. But if you were in an off office environment or a studio or had a dedicated microphone, it would look you know really really nice. So that's great. So now, now this animation suddenly feels a little more accessible to me, right? Like now, I, you just put someone in front of a character and you do this and you say, well, wait a second, I I can do this. I can move my head and I can talk and I can make funny voices and stuff. So I I feel like animation feels a little more accessible. So um, we don't have hand tracking or body tracking yet, although when you saw sneaks last night, if you saw that, you can see that that's the path. Some of those things are potential things that could be included in Character Animator in the future, fingers crossed. Um, so there's a lot of options there. But for now, what you can do is, um, actually, let me turn these off, turn triggers off. Um, you can drag the hands with your mouse. And so you can set different poses or different gestures for your character and that sort of thing. And then there's ways to swap the hand positions as well. So right now when I put his hand out like this, um, that can look kind of awkward. If I want to flip it around, um, there's some different ways to do that. And that's what we call triggers. So here, this character has uh, what we call a controls panel. This is a completely customizable panel um, that you can you know, bring different things in, different artwork, move it around however you want, um, and, and do some cool stuff. And then um, 
like a trigger like this. So after I press the five key, suddenly his eyes get like this, like he's a little more impressed and confident or sure of himself. And all this is is these are layers in the Photoshop or Illustrator file. And in character animator rig mode, I'm saying show uh, these layers and hide the other eye layers. And you can do that with a lot of different things. So for example, uh, right now my character is pretty happy, he's feeling all right, but you know, cartoons aren't always happy. If there's something he's angry about or sad about or he wants to laugh or something like that, um, there are, should be a range of emotions that the character can do. And so a trigger like this, if I press the one key, now even just, this is really simple, I'm just making his eyes squint a little bit and I change the mouth to be an upside down mouth instead of a, a upturned mouth, and already he feels a little more skeptical, a little more angry, you know, he's not so sure about things. So you can trigger multiple things at once, it just doesn't have to be one eye or one something, it could be multiple aspects. And so I can go through, you know, a wide range of emotions, he's a little happier, um, he's a little scared, um, he's really scared, um, or shocked about something, he's kind of questioning what is going on here, he's laughing at all my jokes, um, he's a little sad, no one's laughing. And he cries, ah. then he gets angry. So you see, when you're a cartoon character, you can kind of do whatever you want, aruga, you know, all this sort of stuff. So it's, uh, you're only limited kind of by your imagination. If you want your character's head to fall off and turn into a zombie or something like that, you can uh, totally do that. And same thing with the arms. You can actually record, uh, record arms uh, movements or poses and then trigger them multiple ways. So if I, you know, click through these different triggers, I suddenly have a lot of different poses. That's a spicy mitzabal, uh, that's that one. And uh, this is his hello right there. So you have, you can, you know, kind of build up a repertoire for your character and then basically do this live puppeteering for them. Now, you know, right now the character's movement is very one-to-one. -one. As I move my head around and as I'm talking and doing all that stuff, the character is kind of following all of my actions. But you do have full control over all of that stuff. So if I twirl open my face parameter over here, I can see I have a lot of different options that show up. So one of them is head tilt strength. So right now when I turn my head, tilt it a little bit, my character's head rotates to the side. If I turned head tilt strength all the way down, now when I move my head, it's not going to tilt. It's still gonna move left and right with position, but it's not going to have any tilt to it. Uh, now if I had changed this to like 500% instead, now this happens. Oh, geez. <laughs> Oh, that's, uh, wow, yeah. Uh, so that's how I felt at Max Bash last night, actually, uh, having one of those skull drinks. Um, so uh, you see you have a lot of options. You don't just have to do you know, the one-to-one -one animation. You can kind of fine tune each detail. That includes the eyes. So for example, with the eyes, right now it's kind of following my pupils around as I look around. Uh, right now I have snap eye gaze checked. If I turn that off, the eyes are gonna be a little more jittery. They're gonna try to follow my pupils more in a one-to-one -one type format. Uh, you don't normally see this in cartoons though. You do more see what, you know, eye darts. And so that's why we leave that on. And you can of course change the duration of how quick those eye darts are. So if I wanted them to be a little bit quicker, I could do that as well. And you have other options here too. Like if I didn't want to record with the camera, I could do mouse and touch input. And if I arm that instead, now when I click and drag the mouse, the eyes are following the mouse instead. Or I could click keyboard input, and now when I press the left and right arrow keys and all of that, the eyes are gonna move around that way. So that's kind of a basic overview of um, you know, what, what's happening in Character Animator, but let's take a look at what people have done um, with Character Animator in the past few years. Um, again, we've only been out for, um, is that the right place? Yeah. Um, we've only been out for, uh, this was our 3.0 release that came out on Monday. Um, so we've only been out for a few years, um, but already people have been doing some pretty amazing stuff with it. Let's take a quick look. There's just something about this show. cats, my girlfriend and I, we have two cats. They were an accident. Um. <laughs> so 
So it's cool to see, you see a mix of, you know, professional and amateur stuff. You also see a mix of styles. Uh, anything you put into Photoshop or Illustrator file can become an animated character. So that could be a cell shaded character 2D, that could be a 3D element you bring in, that could be a uh, photo you take of a uh, clay figure, an action figure, or a Lego minifig, or something like that. So there's a lot of different options there. I'm going to walk through three um, common character animator workflows of how could you use character animator in you know, your own projects, in your own work. So first, an online short. So something like a five minute thing you might put on social media, YouTube, something like that. An explainer video or a story or something. Next would be a live stream Q&A. One of the benefits of character animator is it does allow you to do live streaming. All this is happening in real time, so you can just stream to YouTube, Facebook, broadcast TV, and do some really interesting, innovative stuff with it. And then finally, let's say you want to make a full 22 minute you know, cartoon to pitch to Netflix or Nickelodeon or something like that. How would you do that with character animator as well? So, start off with the online short. Um, earlier this year, I made a little explainer style story video about video games. I really love video games, and I was pointing out how I feel like video games are moving into the world of subscriptions. So, like Spotify um, and, you know, for music and Netflix for movies, now video games are starting to move into that model as well. And so I did this little explainer video and had this little narrator character, cartoon version of me, talk through the whole process. And I think it gave it a little bit of a nice, friendly uh, narration touch. So here's a look at about a minute and a half of uh, how that video uh, turned out. Everything is becoming a subscription nowadays. Call me crazy. You're crazy. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And one industry currently going through this transition is video games. We started subscribing to music, now we subscribe to TV shows and movies, and we're well on our way to subscribing to games. And yeah, you could still purchase the latest Ariana Grande album or Marvel Cinematic Universe installment, but there's not much incentive to outright own these when there are cheaper ways to access them, and countless others, through subscription services. Variety trumps ownership. We give up the concept of owning songs or video content in favor of convenient access to large, diverse libraries. Subscriptions are big business. Spotify currently has 87 million paying customers worldwide. Netflix has 148 million. Games differ from music and movies in a few key areas, though. If buffering or input lag are minor annoyances with music and movies, it's a matter of virtual life or death in games. But technology moves fast, and smart people will certainly figure it out in the coming years. What's recently made me the most optimistic for our inevitable streaming future is Xbox Games Pass. It's the same Spotify or Netflix model. You pay $10 a month and can download from a library of over 100 games. And that means the barrier to entry for trying and playing games is significantly lower. And I've found that I'm playing more games for less money. Now, I don't consider myself a car guy at all, so it's highly unlikely I would have plunked down 60 bucks to play Forza Horizon 4. But on Game Pass, I'm 40 hours deep and loving every second of it. So that's a quick look. It went, up, <clears throat> went on for about five minutes, but um, I think, you know, this is a pretty simple character, right? There's not too much going on. He's just the torso up. Um, he does a few hand movements. He, his eyes sometimes turn, turn happy. His mouth sometimes turns upside down. He's got a little flop to the hair, but that's it. And, you know, I could have done this video as just a disembodied voice, right? I could have just shown these stats and things, motion graphics flashing around the screen. But I think it really helps to have this nice little friendly narrator character that's kind of serving as an anchor, serving as a point that's walking you through the entire thing. And the nice thing, too, is because I've rigged this character, I've actually used him for several videos. Um, the launch trailer that we actually did for the 3.0 uh, release of Character Animator, I reused him as the narrator, kind of talking you through all the new features. So that's the nice thing, is that you, once you have a character rigged, you can kind of reuse them over and over again um, for multiple projects. Um, and it, it, you know, it's pretty simple. This guy um, you know, only took me a day or so to put together and uh, made the video, I think, really come together nicely. So this is the workflow that I used for this particular project. And there is a full tutorial online, a two-hour tutorial that shows exactly step-by-step -step how I went through this process. If you are interested, at the end, we'll talk about um, the video tutorials and everything. But I made my character in Photoshop. Uh, when people ask, should I be making it in Photoshop or Illustrator, is there a performance reason or vector versus raster, don't worry about it. What I say is go with whatever you feel comfortable with. So if you want to make, if Photoshop is what you want, but you're worried that it won't scale up, just make your Photoshop file a little bit bigger. And unless you're doing a crazy 8K production, it should be um, just fine. Then with the, uh, so I drew the character, um, put all the names correctly, and we do have blank templates and stuff that can help you know all the names and how to structure your character. 
And then I did my voiceover in Audition. Uh, so I wrote out the script, recorded myself saying it, edited it out, my million of mistakes and ums and ahs that I had. And then um, did, uh, took that, that audio file. And the nice thing about Character Animator is uh, you don't have to just do the audio in real time. So if you have a friend doing a voice, uh, you know, a voice actor or wants to do multiple voices in your thing, you can have them send you an audio file, you drag it into Character Animator, and with one click, it'll analyze that track and do all the lip sync automatically for you, um, which is a huge time saver. Yeah, and we're, I'll show you how that works in a, in a second. Then in Character Animator, I do the performance capture animation. And the way I do recording, and I'll show this again in, in a little bit in an example, but um, I liken it to more like to a band instead of traditional animation. So in a band, you can just press the record button and you record everybody playing live, and then it's a live performance. But you could also do it one at a time, where you record just the drums, and then just the bass, and then just the guitar, lead vocals, cowbell, glockenspiel. I don't know what kind of band that is, but um, you know, you, you could do that. Same thing with character animator. You can just press record and go nuts and you know, move around, or you can start with just recording the audio, and then layer in the head movements, and then the eyes, and then the arms, and slowly build up a performance. And if you make a mistake, you can actually patch in and blend um, other performances together to make it look like you got everything right the first time. And I'll show you that again in, in a few minutes. Finally, uh, who here uh, uses uh, Premiere Pro or After Effects? OK, so quite a few people. So one of the biggest benefits of Character Animator is it dynamic links with After Effects or Premiere Pro. So you can take your character, and if you drag that project or import it into After Effects or Premiere, it shows up as a character with a transparent background. So let's say I'm doing a video, um, and, you know, a, a screenshot or some sort of thing, and I want to put my little cartoon character in the corner. I just drag them in, and they're there as an asset that I can use. Or as I did here in After Effects, I had my character and moved them around and then had all this different stats and typography and things floating around as well. So you have a lot of different options. You can, of course, export a video directly from Character Animator if you want to. Um, but if you want to add those extra bells and whistles, you can do it in those programs that you might already know how to use. So some examples of how people are using this out there in the wild. This guy, Get Mads, this is a like 19-year-old kid from the UK. And he has about 154,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, and he is using Character Animator to do his cartoon persona, Mads. Um, and he's shown his face a few times, but most of his fan base knows him as this character. And so because he has this character rigged, he's able to quickly do uh, more and more animated videos on YouTube. And so a lot of animation channels on YouTube, um, they'll come out with you know, one animation maybe once a month, two months, three months, something like that. It takes quite a while. But with him, because he has this character rigged and he keeps reusing it and keeps adding new emotions and behaviors and gestures and things to it, it keeps growing and becoming a more interesting character. Um, and so he's really into video games. So when a new Super Smash Brothers Ultimate character comes out, for example, Example, he's able within 24 hours to put a video reaction video out there in animated format, and that's what his fans are looking for, and that's what the YouTube algorithm um, is looking for as well. So it's been really successful for him. Um, the Nerdist channel did this thing on the couch with Onyx. This was something they did for Halloween, where they uh, had their character Onyx interviewing old horror icons about how they feel about all their movies being remade recently. Um, so they talked to Pennywise and The Predator and Chucky and all of them. And it was really well done. Um, and you notice that they kind of lowered the frame rate to 12 frames per second to give it this nice little old school look. And I think it works really well. Um, and they were able to do this, you know, again, in a very timely man manner. The holiday was coming up. They only had a couple of weeks. And they were able to put it together really quickly. Um, I want to show you this. This is about two minutes long, but I think it's really cool. It's the same ESPN did. Um, they have this segment called Tell Me a Story, where they take some story of some sports uh, athlete or celebrity or something like that and add some animation to help bring it to life. So this particular one is Roman Reigns, uh, the wrestler, uh, talking about his experience on the set of Hobbs and Shaw, the Fast and the Furious movie. I did my first movie, the star of the movie, some of you may know him as Dwayne Johnson. Some of you may know him as The Rock. I just know him as Dwayne. He's my cousin, family. Being the new guy, I thought I was just gonna have like a regular fight scene, but then they told me, actually, you're gonna have a fight scene with Dwayne. So we built it up, we built it up, and finally we get to the day, and it was going good. We're moving in like perfect chemistry. I hit a guy over here. He's hitting a guy over there at the same time. Then we switch. It was like a dance. At the end of any fight scene, you have that cool superhero pose. So we get eye to eye. 
Give them that breath of confidence. Here we go, brother. We throw our clubs right back. I know I'm the man. Oh my God, I'm not the man. I hit the cameraman directly in the face. He takes a huge squill. He's on his back. I sprint over to him. I'm apologizing like crazy. Everybody's screaming. I pick him up and I notice that no one's looking at me anymore. They're all looking at Dwayne. And only in Dwayne fashion. Roman, I don't know why I even brought you on this project. And at that moment I was like, oh God, he's my boss. I think I gotta fire you now. But luckily the cameraman, he was a trooper. He popped right back up. He took my apology. You get me on the chin if you got to. But every time I see that scene, I'm just gonna think about taking out the poor cameraman. Thank God for post-production. So the cool thing about that is, as I was watching you guys watch it, the parts where you were laughing at were the animated parts, right? That thing could have been done just as live video, right? They could have just had a wide shot and close up of Roman talking and uh, some B-roll from you know, the, the footage on the set and called it that, but animation really added an interesting element to the storytelling, right? And uh, it, you know, the parts you were laughing at when they're doing the ballet or he's holding the cameraman and going, no, you know, that part, Animation just adds this nice element to things. So I think as you learn about Character Animator and think about how it could potentially impact some of your projects, think about that sort of stuff where maybe inter you know, interspersing little pieces of animation here and there might help bring a story to life in a more entertaining um, way. And even better, uh, The Rock actually retweeted this. So uh, he saw this and loved it and thought it was great and uh, retweeted it. So basically I'm saying if you use Character Animator, The Rock's gonna retweet you as well. Yeah, so. No, don't hold, don't hold me to that. Um, uh, so uh, you've seen a bunch of different styles here. So we talked about like 3D characters. So these guys were made in the 3D modeling program and then brought into Photoshop. They kind of rendered each layer. Here's the eyeballs, here's the face, named them correctly and all that stuff, and then brought them in to Character Animator and did this little uh, musical element. And then there's this like squirrel throwing money for some reason and uh, a bear playing a mandolin. I don't really remember what was going on in this one, but I just think it's cool to see the different styles kind of intermixed with each other. Um, and in fact, if st talking about styles, you could do a more like stop motion style character. This is one of our other free example puppets, Maddie, and she's an actual eight inch physical doll um, that's made by a company called Athena Studios in Emeryville. Um, she's got all these like detachable face plates, which are kind of creepy. You take them off and she looks like the, the T100 or 1000 or something like that. Um, and I didn't show that picture, but you do see the little face plates there. And uh, what they did is photograph her in some different poses and put the different faces on her and made her into a stop motion character animator puppet. When you lower the frame rate to 12 frames per second and add some triggers and stuff like that, it looks like you're doing real time stop motion animation, which doesn't seem like it should be possible, but it leads to some pretty cool results. So this is a little promo thing we did a couple of years ago with her when we were showing off our new walk behavior. You can make your characters walk by adding stuff to it. Um, and it just kind of shows how you can you know, put your character in a nice little setting here and uh, do kind of a more stop motion style look. Um, this one was done by uh, Team Coco. So Conan O'Brien did this thing with Zookeeper, uh, LA-based uh, animation studio. These guys had never done character animation before. They were known more for website design and a few other things. And then once they learned about character animator, they added that to their repertoire. And now this is really their bread and butter. This is most of the work that they're doing now is character-based animation. And the reason I want to show this is um, this was done for Snapchat, so that's why it's in a vertical format. And animation is not something you see very often on Snapchat, right, because it's gone within 24 hours. So it doesn't make sense to invest time to make something animated when it's only gonna show up for 24 hours. But what uh, they did is do an animated show. Basically, they took live comedians stand-up acts and uh, did the animated stories to them. And I think this is a great point um, if you're just starting out with character animator and kind of want to experiment with it, I think using comedians or using podcasts or using audio sources that are out there already are a great source of inspiration. Um, you can take those, again, bring them into character animator, do all the lip sync, and then animate and bring the stories or the comedy or the podcast discussion um, to life. But here's an example of what they did with uh, this. This is a guy talking about his elevator ride down to his comedy show. 
I was playing Dallas, Texas. I took an elevator trip to the bottom floor to get to my show, and so many college kids had packed this hotel I was staying at. I almost was late for my own show. I get all, you know, nicely dressed, hair done right, get on the elevator. One floor down, the door opens. I see no one. but a hand snaps around the corner and just stops it. And a guy turns, never says, hey, is it cool if I hold this? My friend's coming. Nope, because he's like 19 and couldn't give a f He's basically a sociopath. He turns and he's just like, Trevor, 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 I got the door, Trevor. And I'm like, I'm gonna kick you in the wrist and break it. But then Trevor comes running and he kicks off his flip-flop and it flies in the elevator, hits the wall next to me. Trevor thinks elevators operate on a force field technology for some reason. Trevor runs in, I'm just like, you sons of bitches. The door is closed. We go one floor down, it opens. The biggest, most packed party floor ever. Everyone's drinking, it's just like pure Mardi Gras. This guy's so drunk, he goes to stand and talk to Trevor and his boy in the doorway. The doors are just hitting him as he's talking. He's so drunk. And he's giggling like it's just something like, I'm just getting tickled. Oh, so you guys like, hang out later? There's some chicks to talk. Like, I'm going to be late. You don't usually touch someone. I put my hand in his chest and softly push him off. And the doors close. We go down, I hear him go, bye. I swear to God. I swear to God. Next floor, there's one kid. I think he bought out the whole floor to fill the rooms with all his drugs. His eyes are black marbles, just so dilated doesn't know how to act. You know when someone's that high, they're you know, smiling or frowning. What's going on? How do you act? There's two rules to an elevator. Look at the doors and don't say to anyone. Everyone knows that. No one taught us that, but we learn. He finally decides, I know it's normal, stands in the corner like this. Blair witches all of us. What are you doing? Next floor down, another party floor, packed as hell. A kid gets on and says the dumbest thing yet. What's in this room? It's not a room. This is an elevator, falls against the button. We're hitting all the floors now. Hooray! So it goes on, and they actually did this for about eight different comedians, and every day there was a new one that came out. But I think it's great because, again, this could have just been a stand-up you know, stand act video, but the animation adds such a great element to it, brings it to life, brings these characters, Trevor and the Blair Witch thing and all that stuff, all these things he's talking about to life, and they did a really, really good job with this. So I think that's, again, you, you can think of how animation can kind of overlay with different things you do in, um, in video projects. Okay, so let's dig into some of this stuff I was talking about of how do you actually go about like recording a character and, and putting together a performance. So here I've got this character, Chloe. And by the way, all these characters, mo a lot of the characters you're seeing today, if you go to the home screen when you first open up Character Animator, they're all here. Um, so if you want Chloe or that blue cat I was showing earlier or this guy was made out of Sculpey modeling clay um, and has more of a stop motion style look or this witch girl or a uh, happy dancing unicorn, you've got all of those here. So. Um, with Chloe, uh, I'm going to do a few things. So first, I have this audio file um, that, uh, th that a friend did. And so I'm going to bring this in, drag it in. And all, that's all it takes. So I imported an audio file. I drag it into my scene. And now I've got my audio down here. And now I'm going to go to Timeline Compute Lip Sync Take from Scene Audio. And doing that is going to analyze that audio track. And it's going to uh, basically do all the mouse shapes for me. And just like that, when I look in and zoom in on this track, I can see, let me just play like the first few seconds. Oh, hey there. You know, I used to be just another piece of artwork. And we'll show more of this in a second. You're going to get really sick of this track. But you can see every mouth shape is showing up down here in the timeline. And so this S shape, I'm like, OK, if I want that to be a little bit later or a little bit earlier, I could do that. Or actually, that sounded more like an F. I can right click it and immediately change it to whatever I want. So the Adobe Sensei stuff works most of the time. But every once in a while, there may be something that stylistically you want to change, or you feel there's a mistake or a flutter of another mouth. And you can get rid of that and dig in. So like I said, um, normally I would do one of these at a time, um, like we talked about with the band doing the bass and drums and guitar and that stuff. Um, with her, I'm going to start just do a head performance. So I'm going to disarm everything and just do the face now. So notice now the lip sync isn't working. I can't drag the hands. The only things that are working are the head and uh, some movements. Actually, you know what? Let's add the eyes in as well just to add one more element uh, to it. And I'm going to do uh, maybe. Yeah, keyboard input for that instead. OK, so I'm going to go through this and let's see how it goes. Oh, 
Oh, hey there. You know, I used to be just another piece of artwork. Static, boring, lifeless. But now I can move around and talk, thanks to the power of animation. A lot of people think animation is time-consuming and complicated and scary, but I'm here to tell you it really isn't. So whether you want to do a short cartoon for social media or an animated live stream or whatever ideas you have swirling around in your head, I'm living proof that you can do it. So what are you waiting for? Let's get out there and animate some stories. See you soon. So beautiful performance, I know, right? But um, uh, <clears throat> Andy Serkis needs to retire. Uh, but um, you, you, what you see is I was able to do these two things. I kind of go through the process, and now those are recorded, and those show up as track sound here. So now I'm slowly building up a performance. I have my lip sync, I have my face, and I have my eye gaze. Now with the arms, a lot of times with, um, you know, the reason I wasn't moving around like this when, when the character was going is because in traditional animation, you don't really see 2D animation, I should say. You don't see the character moving around all the time like that. It's more they move from one pose to the next. It's called pose to pose animation. And it's pretty common in, uh, in the biz, as we say. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do with the dragger, uh, with the, the arms that move around, is I'm just going to put them into a particular position. Let's say like a little rest pose like this. And then I'm going to press record just for a couple of seconds. So I'm not recording anything else. I'm just recording the oh, arms hey there. in this position. You know, I... And we're going to stop there. And now I just have these two takes that I can extend for the entire performance. So now, as I scrub through this, uh, I can see that the arms are always in that position. But now at the beginning, she says, oh, hey there. So I probably wanted her to wave. Now, if I went back and tried to do this and do it exactly right and get the timing right, that would be really difficult. Luckily, there's a secret, and it's called slow motion recording. So what I can do is go into my little 1.0x thing that's right next to the record button here, click on that, go to recording speed at 0.5x, and now I'm going to do a recording, a second recording, of just the, uh, just the hand uh, moving. So let's try this. Oh, hey there. You know, I used to be just another. So there you go. And now when I play it back. Oh, hey there. You know, I used to be just. It looks a little more fast and fluid. So that's a nice little secret that you can do is do, you know, one track of just your rest pose and then add these other poses on top of it, a wave, a point, arms crossed, whatever you want, some of the different things like that. And it adds and makes for a really uh, cool, compelling character. Now, you'll notice that this track is, yeah, going over top of the other track. And uh, by default, you know, I, uh, um, let's say I made a mistake. Let's say with the face, I wanted my character to kind of be, have their head tilted to the side a little bit more in one particular part. So let's uh, get rid of uh, disarm dragger and turn on face instead. And now when I tilt my head, um, you know, if I were to record something like this, let's do another slow motion recording over here. It's the power of the animation. Yeah. A lot of people. So something like that. Okay, so now see if you can tell where the cut is. You gotta look really closely, but see if you can tell where I made a change in the head movement. And talk, thanks to the power of animation. A lot of people think animation. Okay, did you see when her head jerked like she was possessed? Yeah, that's where it was, right? So that's not good, but luckily there is a way to change that. What you can do is take these little um, blending handles here, these little squares, and blend one performance into the other. So now when I play this back, let's see if this is a little smoother. But now I can move around and talk, thanks to the power of animation. A lot of people think anim So it eases from one position to the next. So this is what I do all the time. Like I do, a prof I do a, an initial take, I try to get it as right as I can, but then I look back at it and say, oh, there's some mistakes, or this looked bad, or this should be changed, and then go and blend these extra performances over top of it. And uh, it works really well. Um, this assignment I did uh, at a press event a couple of weeks ago. So you saw Scott Belsky on the stage um, the other day. This is cartoon Scott Belsky, um, and he's got a few controls here. Let's see how, what he's doing. Hey, I'm Scott Belsky. How's it going? Don't tell him I said that. He's going to fire me. Um, do this and this and this and hey, ladies, how's it going? Um, <laughs> A few things like that, a few different triggers. Um, so it's fun to you know, do this sort of thing. And we did this press event where um, he, we started with him not on the stage. And instead, I was project this was projected on the screen, full screen, so something like, uh, like this. And so he comes out, and he's like, hey, everybody, how's it going? I'm Scott. Uh, you know, sorry I couldn't be here today, because uh, I, I, uh, you know, the, 
Wizards of Adobe found a way to make me into a cool cartoon character. Hey, want to buy my book, The Messy Middle? Great. Um, anyway, uh, so I've got, got a bunch of, uh, you know, it's great being a cartoon character, though, because, uh, you know, if, if I see a new product or something I really like, I can do this now. Whoa! That's pretty cool. Or I can uh, grow a mustache and a goatee. That's not bad. Or I can uh, make my hair on fire. Ah! Something like that. Or I can start dancing. Yeah. And so at this point, I started dancing and singing Old Town Road by Little Nas X. Um, and then this is when Scott rushes the stage and the real Scott comes out and said, no, 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 like, what's going on? This is terrible. And, uh, you know, get off the stage, Dave. And I say, oh, so that's a no to the Taylor Swift dance number? And he says, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a hard no on that. So it was fun to do this sort of, like, little live interactive event or thing to, to get, uh, you know, start this press event um, off in, in the right direction. Now, you might have noticed something like this, where when his hair's on fire, um, there is this a uh, frame-by-frame animation that's also playing. So one thing Character Animator can do is mix frame-by-frame -frame animation with live animation, and that leads to some pretty cool results. So let's go ahead and see in the rig mode how this came together. Now this is gonna look crazy because it's showing all the triggers at once, so uh, there's a lot going on here. Um, but, and you can change the background color very easily as well. Um, but if I go into his top contents where the fire is, let's go into this flame, and all I see is this is in my Photoshop uh, the, in my Photoshop file. This was a group called Flame, and it has six layers in it: frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four. All the different frames. It's a six-frame animation. And then I added one of these behaviors to it. So remember, we talked about behaviors like eye gaze and face and the different things that kind of control your character. So in this one, I added a new behavior called cycle layers. And that does exactly what you would expect it to do, cycle through the layers in a continuous fashion. You can go one way, backwards, hold on a layer, do a lot of different things. So this is something that um, a lot of puppets have is kind of this mix of frame by frame with, um, with uh, live animation. And by the way, behaviors, you've got a lot here, right? So if I want my character to breathe, I would add the breathe behavior to them. And then I have to tag their chest as, as breathe, and it will move in and out, inflate and deflate. If I want my character to walk, I add the walk behavior. If I want them to have magnetic hands and like attach a coffee cup or something like that to it, I could do magnets. So you have a lot of different options here. When you first import a character, we give you about seven of these by default, face, eye gaze, lip sync, kind of the basics, but you can add additional behaviors to your, your character if you want to give them some um, additional functionality as well. Uh, I showed that there's, there's a few different um, types of char you know, characters, and here's like a more 3D style character. Uh, this one is called Foxy. This is another free character by um, Emily Watts. And the cool thing about this one is it has automatic head turns as well. So as I turn my head, the character is also going to turn its head. And in the Photoshop file, basically it's saying, here's my front view, here's my quarter view, and here's my profile view. And then the face is basically duplicated or changed in each of these views to show exactly what it looks like. And the head, be head turner behavior will transition between those. And then this character also has the uh, walk cycle as well. So as I move around and look, um, the character will walk back and forth. And this is kind of a hacky way to do it, but she actually added uh, the walk behavior to the background and the foreground too, and changed the rates slightly different so it looks like the character is moving through the scene. And all I'm doing is pressing the left or right arrow keys to make the character move around. Okay, so walking um, is pretty, you know, whoa, what's going on with this guy? Okay. Um, walking is, is something that, uh, um, you know, traditionally setting up a walk animation, a walk rig can be very, very difficult and time consuming, right? So I'm going to attempt to get this character walking in just a couple of minutes. So we've got this robot floating around in air. doesn't look that great right now. Um, but let, oh, also notice his mouth. You have a few different options for mouth. This one's called Nutcracker Jaw, where you can kind of have the mouth pivot or move up and down if you wanted to. So you have a few different options there for your, uh, your mouth shapes and lip sync. Let's go into rig mode and see if I can make this guy any better. So the first thing I would do is let's add a walk behavior here, and that's gonna give the character the superpower to walk now. And then I'm gonna start tagging a few things. So when I select the head, um, I see there's this body over here that I can start adding tags to. So I'm also gonna tag the head as a neck, just because I think want that to kind of bob up and down, the head movements. And then I'm gonna start adding a bunch, I'm gonna select the body and add what we call handles. This little tool down here at the bottom, this microscopic tool down here is a little circle. And this is kind of like null layers in, um, uh, after Effects where you can kind of add these invisible data points and then tag them as different parts of the body to tell Character Animator what they are. And if Character Animator has that information, if it knows where the hips are, if it knows where the waist is, and all of that stuff, it can translate that into an animated 
uh, it do the walk cycle for this character. So you have to tag about nine or 10 different things. So let's go ahead and keep tagging one of these legs here, the right leg. So I'll tag the knee and the ankle and the heel. Um, this feels like it's taken a, a decent amount of time, but compared to other systems of rigging walking, um, this is actually pretty quick. So let's go to record mode and see how we're looking so far. All right, so he's got a little bit of bounce. He looks like he's on a skateboard or something like that. We're starting to get a little bit of movement. Um, let's keep on finishing him and adding these extra uh, final tags. So when you set up this character, I don't have to set like a separate part for the top layer of the leg or the bottom layer of the leg or anything like that. All I have to do is just have my leg group and then I can add these tags on top of it. So when people ask, you know, how should I set up my character for it to work the best? Um, all I say is just the more you can put your character into um, individual parts, the better. So in this case, I've got, you know, my arms are their own layer or their own group. Um, the uh, the legs are their own group, the torso is its own group, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm almost done here. Got my last one, the wrist. So that took about maybe two, two and a half minutes. Let's see how this works. Okay, so now I have a walking character just like that. So pretty cool to immediately go from, um, you know, something that wasn't walking and just floating in the air to a character that's walking around. Now I have a few different options here. So if I wanted instead to, you know, kind of do a strut, he's a little more confident. This step, okay, all right. Uh, maybe a little prance, something like that. Maybe a sneak. This doesn't look as good when it's done fast, but if I slow it down, let's slow down the step speed. Dun, 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 something like that, <laughs> right? You do that. Uh, this one is really dumb. This is called headbang. Uh, I don't know why they put this in. This is not a walk animation. Uh, it's kind of obscene, actually, so let's uh, just get off of that. But it's funny because we, uh, we added that in and, uh, and we, we thought, oh God, we, uh, we added that in and then we felt no one was using it. Our analytics didn't feel like, you know, showed us that no one was really using it, so we took it out. And then um, those guys that did that jammy man thing, the guys that were in the back of the truck with the uh, guitar, uh, playing the guitar and the bear and the squirrel was throwing money, um, they, they had to revert to an old version to use headbang because that's what they did. They added headbang to the characters, slowed it down, and the characters rocked back and forth playing the guitar, and that's how they did that movement. So we said, okay, and we added it back in. So you put something out there, you never know who's gonna misuse your tool in uh, interesting ways, or use it, they used it to great effect. Um, and of course, you have a bunch of different options here. If I wanted the arms, if this is more of a zombie character, I could bring my arm angle up so he's reaching for your brains or you know, something like that, or he has more arm swing if you really wanna add some swing to there. So you can really fine tune um, these different details. And I can also not just have him walk in place, but instead, um, if I change this instead of immediate to left and right arrow keys, and let's change the uh, body speed to 100 here. Now when I press the left and right arrows, he's gonna move back and forth between these different positions. Let me set rest pose there to calibrate him, and that's how you would do something like that. So now he's, this character's moonwalking right now, he's kind of walking back like that, but you could set up a puppet like this guy, um, where when I press left and right, when I press right, he moves right and then he stops, and when I press left, he moves left and he stops. So basically in the Photoshop file, you're setting up your different views. Here's my standing view, here's my left view, and here's my right view, and Character Animator will understand those views if they're tagged correctly and allow you to move between them. So, pretty cool stuff. Okay, let's um, see what, uh... so one of the things I was talking about before was the ability to do live animation. And this is something, uh, I did this um, uh, last winter where it was a snowman Q&A on Facebook and uh, people could call in and ask him questions or send voicemails or in the chat ask a snowman. It was basically ask a snowman whatever you want. And so there were a nice little, you know, kid asked, hey, do you know Rudolph or something like that? Or does everything smell like carrots because you have a carrot for a nose? Um, <laughs> things like that. And, uh, and they thought this was all pre-canned animation. They were like, oh yeah, he must be pressing a button or something like that. And then I said, no, Jason Windsor, I see your comments. And you know, I, I started calling them out. And they were like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, what's going on here? And then they started really pushing and asked me to like sing and rap and, and uh, do stuff like that. So this snowman did end up uh, rapping uh, the Eminem verse to Forgot About Dre uh, at some point. 
uh, and I had to self-censor live, which is not a very easy thing to do, uh, so I don't recommend it. But this is really cool because, you know, you're scrolling through your social media feed, you see the cats, babies, lunch, you know, all that stuff, and they, whoa, a talking snowman, what's going on here? And uh, it really helps you stand out from the crowd and get a lot of, um, this helped me, you know, get a lot of engagement, there were a lot of people watching and commenting, and uh, it was a really, uh, you know, fun uh, little feature. Earlier you saw um, in that sizzle reel I was showing earlier, there was that thing about My Little Pony, and um, they, they used Character Animator. When the My Little Pony movie came out uh, a couple of years ago, um, Twilight Sparkle and Pinkie Pie, don't ask me how I know those names, um, did a live Q&A on Facebook with their fans. So they had the real voice actresses doing the, the two um, characters, and they uh, talked to their fans, and, it's like, and they were asking, you know, hey, Pinkie Pie, what's your favorite cupcake flavor? I like sprinkles, oh, that's so cool. And uh, you know, it was this really nice, engaging thing, and we've seen a lot of companies do that with their mascots or cartoon characters, or even people have brought their logo, company logos to life and done live Q&A sessions with them. It's uh, pretty cool. This is how you would set up a live uh, animated workflow. So, Again, you can make your character in Photoshop or Illustrator. For this particular character, I chose Illustrator just because um, it was more of a flat, cel-shaded style character. And then in the rigging process, I spent a lot of time focused on that controls panel, all the different emotions that the character had. And that's because when you're live, you never know what someone's going to ask you. So if someone asks me, you know, if I just had the happy snowman, then someone asks, how does it feel when you melt? And you're like, oh, it feels great. It's really nice to be melting and turned into a puddle of water. Um, instead, I needed to have like a sad mouth or an angry or a, you know, a little heart that pops up when someone likes it or a wave when someone new says hello to the snowman. So having a wide repertoire of uh, emotions and animations and things like that is really helpful for the live environment. You can't stream directly from Character Animator yet. Um, hopefully we can add that functionality in the future, but what you would, would do is uh, use Nutex NDI plugin. It's a free plugin that you can get for Creative Cloud and actually works with After Effects and Premiere and a few other things as well. It's a very useful tool. And so you can use that to connect you to any type of streaming software that will accept NDI input. And that includes things like Wirecast, XSplit. The one I use is called OBS Studio. Um, that's used for a lot of uh, live streaming on Twitch and uh, YouTube and whatnot. Again, it's called OBS Studio. It's free, it's open source, it's really easy to use. And then that will allow you to stream your creation in Character Animator to Facebook, YouTube, um, Instagram, Twitch, or wherever you want to go. So this is a look at what OBS looks like. So I've got my character, I've got a transparent background here, and then if I open up um, OBS, and bring it in as a source, it's going to show up as a character with a transparent background. And so I can layer this character over top of whatever I want. It could be a live video feed like this, which isn't very interesting, or it could be a video game or other live video. Um, this is my, these are my kids uh, dancing to Blanco Brown's The Get Up uh, in the background there, so yeah, put a sip in it. I'm teaching them very poor, bad stuff, actually. Uh, shouldn't, probably shouldn't show this. You're not recording, right? Great, okay. Um, so. Uh, uh, but it, it's, it's fun, so you can kind of combine it and put it over top of whatever you want. And, um, and this is something that The Simpsons, uh, you know, 20 years ago, they had, uh, a little over 20 years ago, they had a, uh, an episode where they said, very few cartoons are broadcast live. It's a terrible strain on the animator's wrists. Well, as luck would have it, 20 years later, they did do a live episode, and they used Character Animator to do it. So did anybody see the, the episode where they did this, the live Simpsons episode? Cool, okay, quite a few people. So um, basically, it, 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 Homer goes through this improv class, and he's feeling really confident about himself, and at the end of the show, he takes for three, three, minute, three or four minutes, he took live calls from fans all over the country. So he did it once for the East Coast and once for the West Coast. And... Um, they had them all set up and triggered, and uh, it was pretty entertaining uh, how it turned out. So here's a quick look at, at what that looked like. And to prove that we're live, on Saturday Night Live, last night, Drake was terrible. Now to take your calls. If Donald Trump becomes the president, yes. are you going to move out of Springfield and possibly move to Canada? Well, there are a lot of people who want me to move out of Springfield already, so... But I don't think Canada will want me to, will welcome me. But you know what? That's why I'm for Bernie Sanders. I love his chicken. But out of respect, we should refer to him as the Colonel. Hello, Joe. Hey, Homer, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Is I, that your question? I was wondering, what kind of car do you drive? A sa oh, uh, I drive a hybrid, which is a combination of old and terrible. Next caller. 
So this is great. I mean, it really helps if you have a classically trained improv actor like Dan Castanello to do the voice. But um, this this worked really well for them, and uh, they've done at Max a few years ago. Actually, Brian Lampkin talked to Bart Simpson live on stage, and that was also done with Character Animator. And you notice for this instance, they actually turned all the face tracking and stuff off. They did this all with triggers. Um, so there's a sequence that you might have seen where Bart comes around the corner and then goes behind the desk and comes back with Homer's pants and walks out. That's the same concept as the fire animation that I showed you, the cycle layers. Basically, that was like 500 layers in Photoshop. And they added cycle layers and said, when I press this button, Bart is going to go through this 500 frame sequence and do this thing. It was crazy. We were all worried there was going to crash midstream and, and you know they were going to can the project and everything. But luckily, it worked really well and gave us a lot of uh, good street cred. Now, this was you know Homer on an animated background, on just a blank, back, you know, normal hand-drawn background. But like I was showing with OBS, you can put a character over top of whatever you want. And uh, the most popular example of this is uh, this one. Please welcome Cartoon Donald Trump. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for being here, Cartoon Donald Trump. Thank you, Steve, and it's great to be here. He started it. Wait, wait, what, what, who started what? Anybody, Steven, whatever they started. You know, unless it makes America great again, in which case I started it. it it's very exciting, the best. You know, it is true that this week didn't start exactly as we planned it since 1998. But I, yeah, but I think everyone agrees that now is the time for us all to come together in unity or harmony or solidarity, or whatever synonym resonates more strongly with you. <laughs> De okay, just gonna delete, deleting, delete, delete. Uh, even though Vladimir Putin is a great leader, strong, warm, like steaming bowl of borscht, I will yet be told what to do by anyone. <laughs> no. No matter how, no matter how handsome they are. Speaking of temperature, Stephen, your studio is very much too hot. Excuse me a moment. Ah! What? No, we're just good friends. We're, we're so close, we finish each other's elections. Uh, so anyway, um, so animation is not something you see on late night television very often, right? It's just they're reacting to the current day's events and to the lead time on animation just doesn't make sense to add it into that pipeline. But uh, this really talented animator, Tim Lukey down there, um, figured out that you could use character animator and did this segment. So um, they put the character over top. You know, Steven is basically talking to a blank chair, but then in the monitor, the audience sees the cartoon character and what they're doing and then they composited it for, of course, the, the broadcast. Um, and it's really cool. So it's allowed them to add this into their pipeline. And The Late Show, if you watch it, does a lot of animated segments, actually. There's a segment where Steven's sometimes talking, and then God appears above him on the uh, top circle. And that's done with Character Animator. Uh, they had Birdie Sanders, a little bird that comes out. That's Character Animator. So there's quite a few things. And it's cool to see animation in a place that you normally wouldn't see animation um, with this. Um, I was talking about Twitch and video game streaming. Uh, Critically Awkward are three streamers who are in different locations, but um, they stream with their avatars, their character animator characters, instead of having the little webcams in the corner. And this allows them to have these really nice little you know, animated personas that have a lot of triggers, like Donk's head will explode, or you know, heart eyes, and that sort of stuff when they really like something. Um, and then because they have the characters rigged, they don't just do video games, but they also do developer interviews with video game developers. So they talk over movie trailers and give their takes on that. So they're creating a ton of content with these characters. And they each have their Twitter account and all of that stuff. And it really uh, has worked you know, incredibly well for them. In fact, the official Dungeons and Dragons channel has also been using Character Animator for their live broadcasts. Um, so this is Brin Binwin Bronzebottom, who is a uh, barbarian. And he, play he talks and uses Character Animator with his friend Crowey um, as they played various Dungeons and Dragons games on Twitch. This was one of the coolest things. Um, Nickelodeon, a couple years ago at Comic-Con, did this live VR thing where people put on VR headset, a VR headset, and they feel like they're on the rooftops of Manhattan. And that was done in the uh, Unreal Engine, all 3D. 
But then they piped in character animator, 2D characters of Michelangelo and Donatello and placed those in the 3D environment. And so when the person put the headset on, they felt like they were talking to the two turtles directly in front of them. And they had the real voice actors uh, doing the voices, uh, the, that guy, Josh Brenner, and uh, the other guy. And uh, so you actually felt like, like you were talking to the turtles. And it was really cool. Like if I could have talked to Optimus Prime as a kid, like that would have you know, completely made my life. Um, so it's a really fun experience. And the fans loved it, the press loved it, and gave them a lot of uh, you know, uh, press for this, this uh, reboot that they were doing for the show. And then you see they, there's these little buttons and stuff. They had all these live puppeteers um, who were doing all the actions and stuff for the performance for the character. So the last version, uh, the last thing I was going to say, um, the last workflow, we talked about the online short and the live workflow. And now, what about a longer cartoon type episode? So something like a 22 minute episode you might want to put online, so, or, or broadcast or whatever. So this is something I did last year. It was called Evan Flamethrower Robot Detective. And uh, it was this idea of this, this detective named Evan Flamethrower who is trying to solve a mystery of who hacked this bank. And there's several suspects, including an ATM and a hack bot and a few other characters. And so I drew all the characters. I got my coworkers to do the voices. Um, I drew the backgrounds and all of that stuff and uh, put it together. And so the workflow here is very similar to the first one that I showed. It's just you have more of everything. So I had to make, you know, animate each character separately um, and then composite them together in After Effects. And when I was doing the voiceovers, I would do, you know, the track, okay, here, here's where, um, you know, Hackbot is talking, and then here's where Evan is talking, and then would solo out the track that I wanted, bring that into Character anima Animator, do the lip sync, and animate against that, um, and then do it for the other character as well. So it's just a bigger production. I just had to keep, you know, everything organized um, that way. And so, this was also an interactive thing. So uh, it's more like a choose your own adventure style video. So um, through the process, Evan is able to ask uh, the suspects and interrogate them. And using those U YouTube end cards that are at the end that like suggest new videos for you, I changed those to link to other internal unlisted videos that I had on my channel. So you could ask like, you know, where were you yesterday? Or do you know this other character? And so there are a lot of branching storylines that you could go through. Uh, so I had to, this was, dumb, and I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy, but I uh, created and uploaded 190 videos to make this thing work, right? Um, because there's all these branching storylines, you never know what they're going to say. Um, and so it was a crazy, uh, crazy amount, but it was possible with Character Animator. There's no way I could have done this with traditional animation tools. Character Animator allowed me to work quickly and efficiently and make small edits if there were small changes and uh, get something like this out there. Gulf City is a, a series on YouTube um, that's episodic. He does these long 10, 15, 20 minute episodes that he puts out about this ghost named Ghastly and this various crowd of uh, characters and they get in fights and I don't really know what's going on most of the time but it's, uh, it's interesting and then he also does Twitch streams, uh, the characters of Twitter accounts, uh, he puts them on t-shirts so he's kind of building this Gulf City empire um, with all these characters and the cartoon show is kind of the middle of the storytelling and all of that stuff. Um, as I said, The Late Show has done a lot of uh, animation for their, you know, their intros and, and during the, uh, the thing, this is something they did for um, uh, uh, Christmas last year. Um, but then this was so successful and they saw how well it was working that they greenlit a TV show. So our cartoon president on Showtime um, is, uh, uses Character Animator for all of their character animation and they just finished uh, their second season and, uh, you know, News happens very quickly with this administration, and some characters come and go, and um, they have to uh, react to that with animation. And so one thing might happen one week, and they have to you know, completely change a script around. And luckily, the fluid uh, you know, character animator allows them to do that. I just love these, these character designs. Some of the Stephen Miller in the back there, the huge forehead is uh, fantastic. Um, so uh, here's a quick look at a, at a short thing of how that turned out. Remember the drill. You tell the press that I'm pen pals with some poor kid and I give him tons of advice and money. Classic Trump move. Plan a positive story and watch the great press come in. CNN tip line, how can I help you? Hi, uh, I'm nine years old and President Trump calls me every morning to give me advice and lots of money. Uh-huh, nice story. And what's your name, young man? Uh, Guy Callmaker? Oh. Crap! Shot! They practically put me on trial! It's all right. Calm down while Eric gives it a shot. Well, should be pretty easy for me. Sixth grade, I played a yellow brick in Wizard of Oz. So, pretty much got that down. CNN tip line, how can I help you? Uh, hello. I'm Johnny 
phone dialer. I'm a brick, and I would like to plant a story. Crap! So, you know, it's, it's a fun show. There's a lot of, you know, crazy things they, they, they do here. And uh, again, the flu they're able to work so quickly that when the Democratic debates happened, when the first ones came out, um, they stayed up all night uh, for about 12 hours, and then the next day released a five-minute cartoon of the de Democratic debates. And it was, it was a great little event, um, and amazing how quickly they were able to work. Um, here's a quick look at how that turned out. Welcome to night one of the first Democratic presidential debate. Let's meet the candidates. Audience, please withhold your, is this the best we can do until the end? Mayor de Blasio. Hi, Mayor Bill de Blasio, and if I have one weakness, it's that I work too little. I'm Tim Ryan, I can't stop blinking, and every second feels like an hour. Julian Castro asked to reserve his introduction time to later destroy Beto O'Rourke. Wait, what? Senator Booker? I'm Cory Booker. If you don't vote for me, I'll come to your home, knock on your door, and ask, why not? I'm Elizabeth Warren, the healthy salad place that you should eat at, but Chipotle is right there. I'm Beto O'Rourke, a bunch of people told me to run, and I'm still not sure why. So, uh, so this was great. They were able to react, you know, um, the, the whole Kamala Harris and, and Joe Biden thing that the following night they were able to do something with that. So it was, a, it was a pretty interesting um, how, how quickly they were able to work with this sort of stuff. So on Monday, we just released our latest um, release, and we've added a lot of interesting things in the program, including, what do you see down here? Keyframes. That's right. So character animator before was all just performance capture-based things, but now you get, yeah, okay, I got it. Jeez, all right. Got lunch time. Um, you uh, do do not disturb Zon. What is going on? Okay. Um, so keyframes allow you to um, uh, you know basically again like we showed with adding the frame by frame animation, the fire on top of live animation. Now you can also add keyframe animation and mix that with live animation as well. So if I want my character to you know, move around or jump in the background or that sort of stuff or rotate. Um, I can do all these movements and uh, add that to my live animation. Now the best part is though, is that I can select this stuff, right click it, and turn it into one of those triggers, one of those buttons that I press. Um, so this character has an interesting controls panel where I can make her float out and hit the Saturn out of the way and have the clouds come out and then fly back in. And all this stuff is still happening live. I can still move around and be live with my character, um, but you know, I can also have them jumping around and moving positions and a bunch of other stuff. So it just opens up a wide range of possibilities. Um, one thing, you know, if I just were to make a video and do something like po post this online to YouTube or Instagram or something like that, it's great, it's this kid and this robot playing you know, guitar and keyboard and stuff like that, but it's kind of boring. And why is it boring? Well, there's no camera movement. There's no camera shots or anything like that. In the past, we would have said, okay, go to After Effects or Premiere and zoom in and out and do all of that stuff. But now, instead, we do have a camera um, that you can add in Character Animator. And so basically, you just go to Scene, New Scene Camera. That's going to add a camera track down here. And now I can switch between you know, close-ups, wide shots. I've got some pans and zooms I can do between the keyframes. You can also trigger the keyframes to be live. So if you're in a live setup, and I press 1 for the close-up, 2 for the zoom, 3 for a pan or a jump cut, whatever you want, um, you can do that as well. So you have a lot of options there. And then um, my favorite is uh, audio triggers. So now when you have a trigger, um, you can add audio files to it as well. So with this character, um, when I press like the, uh, let me select the character here, so I see his controls. When I press the five to do the snare drum, it's also doing the snare hit. And so I can do something like this. Something like that, yeah, so <laughs> pretty fun. Um, and, you know, but you can kind of take this to the uh, to crazy extremes. So um, Jim on our team hooked up this, uh, this character to uh, David Lee Roth lyrics. And um, this is how that turned out. Yes, I'm living at a base that kills. He's got like 20 of these. It's, uh, it's kind of crazy. I won't bore you with all, the, all, all of them, but you get the general idea of, uh, of how this all turns out. So pretty cool to, to um, you know, see this. So those are the new features. Those are, are available now um, for all of you to, uh, to check out. Um, so let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. 
So seeing all this today, what it, so we walk away from here, you're like, hey, this is great. What could I animate with this? What sort of stuff could I do? So definitely a social media, social media post. I think short experiments are the best place to start. Don't feel like you have to do the full five minute or 20 minute episode to start. Focus on a short 10 second clip or a 30 second clip or something like that to get you started. I think that's a great way to begin. Um, definitely a YouTube channel. If you have ideas of stories and characters and worlds and you have friends who make funny voices, put it together and make it into a cartoon show. Um, it's never been easier to do that, whether it's a story time animation like that Git Mavs guy was doing or episodic like, excuse me, Gulf City or a kid's channel. We see a lot of those as well. Um, so there's a lot of options there. Live streaming, like I said, Twitch, Facebook, um, all these different places um, you can go to. And then live events, like I was showing with the Scott Belsky thing, you can add them into live presentations or um, ideas like that. Um, there was a, uh, for Halloween recently, we saw someone send us a video where they projected a character animator face on a pumpkin. And the pumpkin was talking to people, uh, kids, as they came up. Hey, Spider-Man, that's a great costume. And the kid's like, whoa, what's going on here? Um, so you can do a lot of interesting stuff like that. And I would also say, don't think like you have to put everything online and do you know big scale you know cartoon productions. Some of the coolest examples that we've seen are fun little experiments that you just do on your own in your own home. So my eight-year-old son had a Harry Potter themed birthday party this year, and we did a sorting hat ceremony where I put the sorting hat. I was upstairs in my office. I had baby monitors so I could see what uh, the kids were doing down here and hear them. And then the sorting hat would talk to them in a very bad British accent and uh, sort them into different houses. And I had triggers for like, okay, you're in Hufflepuff or you're in you know, Slytherin or whatever, and a little poof would happen here in a second and uh, shows the little you know, house and everyone cheers, yay, you know, whatever. And so these kids went home and told their parents you know, about this and the parents told us like, hey, what was going on in this party? Did a, did a sorting hat like, talk to our kids and what was going on? Were they hallucinating or saying what was going on this eight-year-old's party? No, 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 it was all character animator. I had to explain it to them. And, um, but it's, it's, I'm just saying that there's maybe instances in your life where there's like that Halloween thing or a birthday party or something like that where you could also add a little bit of animation magic um, you know, to the whole thing. So I talked about the, uh, the home screen being a great place to get all these puppets from and tutorials. Um, these two tutorials up top with the, the little girl and the, um, uh, the, the wizard are great kind of introductions to how to do things in Character Animator. And then there's uh, all these characters are free for you to use however you want, copyright free, royalty free, um, whatever you need. If you're interested in more, though, um, feel free to take a picture of this. This is uh, some of our resource websites. So free example puppets. We have uh, over 50 extra puppets that you can use, ranging from a lot of the characters you saw today to 3D puppets, uh, claymation, stop motion style puppets, a monkey playing video games, whatever you want. There's probably a puppet that you can use and either use it exactly as is or uh, add a hat to it, change the skin tone, change the hair color, um, or you know, learn how they made things and then use those for your own creations. And then as well, we have a ton of video tutorials um, that teach you everything you need to know about Character Animator, um, and that site is a great resource. And almost all of those have example puppets or files that you walk through and will tear apart, and you can kind of understand what's happening. However, if you run into something and uh, your, your, head's, your puppet's head's falling off or their eyeballs are coming in their eyes or something weird like that and you can't figure out what's happening, feel free to contact me, Dave Warner, uh, at Adobe, at, at OK Samurai on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of those different places, or OKSamurai.com um, to reach me. So I just wanted to end today just by saying we all have great stories to tell. And I think there may be some stories that maybe we've held back on telling because we don't know the right way to say them or to show them. And animation may be a great way to tell those stories. So as you think about what's a story I could tell or how could I get my stories out there in the world, um, even if it feels like a dumb idea or something, you know, I, I don't know if I should do this, I would say go for it. because. That, that Evan Flamethrower robot detective, like that was a dumb idea, right? That was, that was a really dumb idea. I was just kind of sketching around and having some ideas on my train commute in and out of work and uh, you know, had, had ideas of what these characters would be. And, but I did see it through. I, I got my friends to do the voices, did the animation, put it all together, and um, ended up winning a film festival award for internal Adobe Film Festival for it. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, so they gave me this trophy slash paperweight that I don't really know what to do with, but it's, it's, it's cool. Um, 
But even cooler is um, I got a uh, I, I reached out um, and got a call from Netflix and their um, uh, their interactive division, the guys who did that Black Mirror Bandersnatch uh, episode. There's no Evan Flamethrower coming to Netflix. That's not happening. But it was just cool to talk to them and that they saw this dumb little thing that I put together six months earlier, which just sketches in a notebook and brought that into the world. So it is a crazy time to be a creative person right now. You can create a story. Put, you know, publish it out there, and everyone is just one click away from it. So if you leave you with nothing else today, um, please just tell your stories. So we don't have time for questions. I'll stick around for a little bit, but I do have to leave for Adobe Live uh, in a second. But I do have free unicorn stickers and a few other things up here. So if you want to have those, come up. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your Adobe Max.